Hello, welcome. Electric railroads, especially those under the wire, have always caught my attention. And today, we'll share a bit on the Sacramento Northern. I'll start with a bit of a preface here before we see some action. Little steeple cab freight motors have always intrigued me. So, I decided to create one, as there are a few offerings of these in end scale. Though Shapeways, a 3D printing platform, has offered a very nice Baldwin Westinghouse model. Using Kato's powered chassis, I attempted to fit a body onto it, then cramming all the weight I could into any space that was left available. I found that Arnold Rapido had offered a steeple cab unit many years ago, and you can still find them once in a while, though you don't see them much anymore. However, I did manage to get hold of a couple and tried bashing them into something like the old GE freight motors of the Sacramento Northern. So, making a few parts from styrene, adding pantographs and a tr crude trolley pole, I ended up with something that was somewhat reminiscent of the old freight motors. The Sacramento Northern was a very interesting electric operation. At one point, its inner urbans ran from San Francisco all the way to Chico, a distance of 185 miles. Interurban service at one time actually crossed the San Francisco Bay Bridge on tracks shared with the key system, arriving and leaving from the Transbay Terminal in San Francisco. The trip from the city up to Chico took about five and a half hours. The Sacramento Northern provided passenger and freight service using several different electrical systems operating at three different voltages. Its inner urbans and freight motors collected the power by means of a trolley pole, pantograph, or an electric third rail shoe. Traveling east, trains would leave the street trackage of Oakland and climb into the East Bay Hills and at one point hit a mile a very stiff 4.6% grade. This obviously limited the trains in size and required the efforts of freight motors on both ends of the train for power as well as for braking on the grades. The caboose of the train would always be entrained ahead of the rear motor. At the summit, trains passed through a 3,200-foot tunnel to reach the 1.9% decline on the east side. Like many roads, the Sacramento Northern was a successor to earlier established railroads. The Oakland, Antioch, and Eastern Railway had originally built the line out of Oakland, up and over the East Bay Hills, and then on to Sacramento. On the north end, the Northern Electric Railway built the line south from Chico down to Sacramento, with branches to Hamilton City, Oroville, Calusa, and Woodland. Both of these railroads had very interesting histories which reach into many other facets of California's history. Today, one can still see the NE initials on the steel framework of the old Northern Electric Bridge crossing the Feather River between Marysville and Yuba City. On a small side note here, displaying how things in this small world of ours can be so intertwined, I discovered that another steeple cab, which I fashioned for my Petaluma and Santa Rosa Railroad, actually had its beginnings with the Northern Electric, having been originally built by the Diamond Match Company, which had operations above Chico at Sterling City. It was sold to the Northern Electric and became their number 1,000. Eventually, it would be sold to and then rebuilt by the Petaluma and Santa Rosa as their number 506. All told, the Sacramento Northern and its predecessor railroads owned 29 freight motors. The Northern Electric built several box motors themselves at their mulberry shops in Chico. I'm looking forward to trying to model one of those. Besides those box motors, the SN owned an additional 16 steeple cab motors, nine being built by Baldwin Westinghouse, and seven having been built by General Electric. Train lengths on the SN were not very long up in the East Bay Hills, 
perhaps eight cars and a caboose. But out in the valley, the juice jacks pulled very respectable longer trains. Indeed, in 1951, GE Motor number 650 was pulling 21 gondolas loaded with coil steel for the U.S. steel plant at Pittsburgh. Although the little freight motor was up to the task, the Lisbon trestle that it was traversing over was not. The trestle collapsed under the weight of the train. The entire train went down with the trestle. The motor, the train, and its caboose eerily remaining upright upon the collapsed trestle work. After conquering the East Bay Hills on the run to Sacramento, the trip would also involve a ferry operation, where the huge train car ferry, the Ramon, would carry cars across Susun Bay between Mallard and Chips. The Ramon had a capacity for six interurban cars, and I've seen a picture of the Ramon carrying eight freight cars and a freight motor. The Sacramento Northern faced tough competition from the Southern Pacific on the route from Oakland to Sacramento, while both railroads at one time used car ferries across Susun Bay. The Southern Pacific would build their two-track bridge between Martinez and Benicia in 1930. The former Oakland, Antioch, and Eastern had considered building a bridge crossing years earlier, but they never did. SP's bridge crossing could be considered the factor that would eventually put the Sacramento Northern out of business. While the Ramon made an average of 18 trips a day across the strait, with an average running time of about 14 minutes, its service was not anywhere near equal to the unimpeded run of the Southern Pacific. The Sacramento Northern had at different times named trains called the Capital Limited and the Metropolitan, which together would become the Comet, the Sacramento Valley Limited, and the Meteor. But passenger crossings on the Ramon would end in 1940. July 1941 would see the end of passenger service on the Sacramento Northern altogether with the exceptions of some city streetcar service in Sacramento, Marysville, and Chico. In the following years, with the collapse of the Lisbon Trestle in 1951, which forced the rerouting of traffic to other lines, there was little reason to keep the Ramon. At any rate, 1954, the Coast Guard would condemn the Ramon, and she'd be retired. The last electric freight operations between Oakland and Mallard came in 1957. But in the days of this ferry crossing, interurbans and freight would continue on to Sacramento. After a 10-minute layover in Sacramento, the Sacramento interurbans would continue north to Chico. On this portion of the road, power was provided by means of an electric third rail for the most part, not hard to imagine how this rail, being unprotected, without any safety covering, just may have led to the demise of many an errant critter over time. Electric operations would end bit by bit over the Sacramento Northern Lines, with trackage being either abandoned or having the electric lines being removed with the duties now being carried out by diesel-powered locomotives. The last electric operations anywhere on the Sacramento Northern would be in Marysville and Yuba City, where the last of the little steeple cabs would close out electric service in 1965. It's been noted that the electric operation probably lasted there as long as it did because of favorable rates that was supplied by PG&E and the power that they sold, and the fact that the remaining freight motors were still in pretty good shape. But I'll quit talking here for a bit, and we'll just watch the little steeple cabs do their work at Marysville.
I might add just one more comment here, uh, in case you were wondering. That poor brakeman that's been riding that little caboose, 1614, all this time, and he's riding a caboose that was bashed by my cousin, Marty Coyle. Marty did a great job on the caboose, but unfortunately, he uh, also put the little brakeman on there and doomed him to ride forever. As we watch the last movements of our little steeple cab, we're not far away from the time when the dieselization of the Sacramento Northern would be complete. It would come in the forms of GE 44 and 70 tonners, Alco S2, EMD SW1, NW2, GP7, and even F3 models, as well as a Baldwin VO1000. These locomotives would take on the various paint schemes of its parent road, the Western Pacific, but they've retained their road name on the sides. I can remember seeing Sacramento Northern GP7 711 on the Esplanade in Chico in the early 1970s. It seemed somewhat mysterious to see if that light track that used to support the little Bernie cars of Chico would hold up under the Jeep's great weight. But it did. The road, now fully dieselized, would continue in its role as a feeder for freight to be forwarded to its parent road, the Western Pacific. The Sacramento Northern, though wholly owned by WP, nonetheless retained its identity as a subsidiary right up until the day before the Western Pacific was merged into the Union Pacific. So, I thank you for looking in, and hope you enjoyed it.